In this video, we'll look at combo boxes for tkinter. Hey guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com, and in this video, we'll look at drop down boxes, or as they're called in Kinter, combo boxes. And a combo box is kind of what it sounds like it is it's a box that you click on it, drops down, and you could select different items from the box. Now a combo box is a TTK widget, which is a little different than a regular Kinter widget. We haven't talked about those yet, so that should be interesting. So before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing's awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. So let's learn about combo boxes. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Intro to Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling it combo underscore box dot pi. And before we create our combo box, let's create a quick label. So let's go my underscore label. And this is going to be a label. And we want to put it in a root. We want the text to say nothing for now. And let's give this a font of, let's say Helvetica with a size 18, to make it a little bit bigger. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y of 20, push down the screen a little bit. And underneath this, let's do a button as well. So let's go my underscore button. And this is going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, I don't know, submit, something like that. And let's give this a command of, I don't know, say submit again. We don't have this function yet. We'll create it in just a second. And let's my underscore button dot pack this guy. Give it a pad of Y of 20, push down the screen a little bit. So now let's come up here real quickly and just define this submit function. And let's go my underscore label dot config. And we want to set the text equal to something that we'll change later. So, okay, now let's create a combo box, right? These are basically drop downs, but Kinter calls them combo boxes. And like I said earlier, the combo box doesn't actually come with tkinter. It's a TTK widget. And the TTK widgets, there's about a dozen of them or so. They're sort of like add-ons that were added on later. And we can access them by importing all the TTK widgets up here. So let's just go from tkinter. We want to import TTK. Now I know up here we're importing everything in this statement. But why do we have to do this separate? That's just the way Kinter is. <laughs> right, so, okay, now we can use these widgets in our program. So let's come down here and let's create a combo. I'm going to call it my combo. And this is going to equal a TTK dot combo box. I misspelled combo. There we go. Combo box. All one word. The B in box is lowercase, which is a little bit weird. We want to put this in root and we need to give this some values. We'll set those values equal to, and this will be a Python list. Now you could do it right here. So we could say, you know, pepperoni, do pizza toppings again, cheese, and mushroom. Now that works. That's perfectly fine, but this is kind of sloppy, right? This code is going to get out of hand. I like to instead come up here and create a list, a Python list, and we'll set that equal to our actual Python list. Now we can just pass this variable name in there and that'll work. So now let's go my underscore combo dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20, push down the screen a little bit. And now let's save this and run it just to see what we have. This won't actually do anything yet, but we can at least play around with it and see what it looks like. So let's head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash tkinter.com directory and let's run Python combo underscore box dot pi. When we do, we get this drop down box. You notice right off the bat it's empty. If we click on it though, it has items. Now we haven't told it to do anything yet with those items, but okay, this looks good. It's actually working. Now, a couple of things. One, when we run this and it's empty, how do we make it so that it's not empty? Maybe you want it to be empty by default and that's fine, but if you don't, how do we change that? Well, super simple. We can just set whatever of these items we want right off the bat. So let's say set default item. And we just call my underscore combo dot set and we pass in whatever we want. So if I want pepperoni, did I spell that right? I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we come back here and run this again. Now, right off the bat, it says pepperoni and that's already selected. So, okay, that's good. Now, how do we actually do something with this? Come up here. We could do this a couple of different ways, right? Whenever this function gets called, let's take my underscore combo and dot get whatever it is. So here, this button will run whenever we click the button and it'll grab whatever we selected. So now we can come back over here, run the skin. 
If we do nothing and click submit, it says pepperoni. If we, you know, pick cheese and hit the button, it says cheese, mushroom, and mushroom. Just that easy. Super cool. Now, what if we want to sort of run the function by just clicking on one of these things? Can we do that? I don't know. Let's give it a try. So come up here to our combo and give this a command of submit, which is what we called this function up here. So now if we save this and run it, ah, uh, nope, we can't do that. So a lot of these things like the combo, like the check boxes and the radio buttons, you can give it a command. Not so with this. So you have to sort of call it from a button. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, here we're getting it. We can set it automatically anytime we want. So if when we click this button, we can output whatever it is, then we can change it. So let's go my underscore combo dot set and set it to cheese. So if we save this and run it, get rid of these errors. Now it's on, let's say mushroom. We can click submit. It says mushroom, but then it gets changed up here to cheese. And now if we click it again, it says cheese. So you can set it programmatically anytime you want to anything you want. So very cool. So let me take that out because that's a little weird. Let's comment it out. Now let's save this and run it one more time. And I want to show you something kind of interesting about the combo box. We can actually type stuff. Now when we click it, it says that we can erase things and we could say, you know, John. Now it says John. This is a very sort of interesting thing with combo boxes. It opens up all kinds of crazy uh, possibilities for using this thing for different things. Very, very cool. Now, maybe you don't want your users to be able to type stuff in, right? How do we change that? Well, by default, it allows you to type stuff in if you want, but you can change that. If we come up here where we defined our combo box, we can set the state to read only. Now, if we save this, head back over here, run it again. It says pepperoni. If I click on this and try to type, I'm typing right now, you can't tell, but it, it's not letting me change it to anything. So if you don't want people to be able to type, set the state to read only. If you do, just let it be the default that allows for that. Let's see, what else can we do? We can also grab the entire option list, right? If we want programmatically. So let's come up here and instead of just getting the selection, let's output the whole list. And let's go my underscore label dot config and set the text equal to my underscore combo. And then here we could pass in square brackets and call the values. So if we save this, head back over here and just hit the button now, we get the entire list, pepperoni, cheese, and mushrooms. Not all that useful, but maybe you can tinker around with it. Actually, I haven't tried this, but let's see if we can call an index number. So let's call the zeroth item. That would be pepperoni, right? Is this a Python list? Good question. Yes, it is. So you can loop through those if you wanted to, right? So Let's see. Uh, let's just do that. Let's go for thing in and let me grab this. And then what do we want to do here? Let's make this into an F string and then print out thing. And then like a, another line, line break. So now if we save this and run it, I'm just kind of winging this. Boom. Oh, we only get one thing at a time. Hmm. Oh, we need to plus equals. So let's, let's make this into a variable. I'll say items equal, and then let's go thing, or let's go items plus thing plus, <laughs> uh, then let's go line break. And then when we're all done looping through everything, let's do our items. All right, that should work, right? Now we should get one. Oh, oh, kinds of items equals items. Look, uh, items. Uh, all right. So we got to set it to. <laughs> this is why you don't wing things. So let's go. Uh, oh, for yeah. Let's say items equals nothing. And now when we click submit, yeah, we get a list. One on each line: pepperoni, cheese, mushrooms. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can loop through there as if it's a regular Python list because apparently it is a regular Python list. Very interesting. So let me comment out all of this nonsense. I'll leave it in there in case you want to look at it in the code. But let's see what we want is just this. Very cool. What else can we do with this? Let's play around with, let's say the width at that equal to 100 and the height equal to, let's say 50. 
save this and run it, we get a much bigger box, but the height isn't really any different. So I suppose height doesn't work with this. If you wanted to change the height, well, let's change it to 100 just to make sure. Yeah, we get the we get the same thing there. But what we can do is set the font. So let's go font equals Helvetica. This is usually a workaround and set it to 18 size font. For a lot of Kinter widgets where you can't finagle the height, you can change the font to make the whole box bigger that way. So kind of keep that in mind. Kind of weird, but there you go. Let's change this from 100 to like 50. Oh, it looks a little better. Oh, it is still way too big. So let's try 20. Now, a lot of the times when you get a problem like that, it's because Kinter is not using pixels for the width, it's using font size. So 50 big fonts is much bigger than 100 little fonts, right? So kind of keep that in mind. That's a nice size. And there you go. So those are combo boxes, super useful. You use them for everything. Just remember, this is a TTK widget. So you have to import it as a TTK widget. And when you use it, instead of just calling, you know, equals combo box, it has to be TTK dot combo box. That's true for all the TTK widgets that you want to use. We'll get into other TTK widgets eventually. Most of them are similar to the Kinter widget. This is one of the only ones. There's only a handful that are only TTK widgets and there is no equivalent in the regular TKinter widgets. So that's kind of interesting and very cool. In the next video, which should pop up right around there somewhere, we'll look at menus and that should be pretty cool. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.